All right, welcome to the wild card round. How y'all doing? I am Joy. That is Steve, and this, as always, is our NFL predictions versus finally entering the postseason. Yep, we're in the home stretch there, uh, as far as the NFL season goes. We are. There are, I believe, what three weeks left, and then we have the big game at the end of the year. So, absolutely. Now, uh, one little tiny programming note then when we do our uh, big game predictions with steve and i we will also be having a rundown of everybody's best and worst teams that they've predicted throughout the entire season thanks to our uh, friend and fellow competitor john he's been keeping track of all the stats and he knows like um who's my worst team and uh, my best team and the like. So we will be having a rundown of that as well um, at the end of the season, per the usual. But uh, first things first, we do have to review the final week of the regular season. Mm -hmm. And that begins with our standings, which had a bit of a shakeup after last week. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We have John still in first, 176, 96. I am clinging to second. <laughs> with 175.97. Steve is now in third place with 174.98, only one game back. And Papa Agron is one game behind that at 173.99. Mm -hmm. SDS overtook Troll and Buff, and he is at 146.126. Troll is at 145.127, and Buff is at 144.128. So it's really cool to see that we have like three main races going on. Yeah. Um, I think that's really fun. It's like the, the tale of two sides. And then Dino um, lost his game last week because he's a Seahawks hater. And he is now um, 11 and 8 on the season. Yeah. He will yeah. be having a pick this week because, surprise, surprise, we still have birds in the running. So he yeah. will be predicting the Eagles and Bucks game coming up. However, it's dark, <laughs> and um, I was very busy today, so I couldn't record it yet, so I will be recording it tomorrow when I go to edit this darn thing together, and then show you guys what his pick is there. Alright, so, week 18, final week, um, my regrets, just in general, aren't like one game in particular, but it's going to be the lack of research and patience on my part, because I didn't... Uh, take into account the resting of starters for a lot of teams, uh, Cleveland being the main one here. Um, had I actually thought about it, I would have gone with the Bengals to win that one, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking. So, what would be your regret of the week? Because mine's just like uh, being dumb. Yeah, mine is uh, picking the Chargers to uh, beat the Chiefs there, and... Uh, I figured the Chiefs uh, resting uh, Mahomes and Kelsey and the, the rest of their big starters there uh, would uh, hamper them, but I guess it, guess all their backups uh, pretty much uh, won the game for them there. Yeah, um, they won 13-12, to 12, so you weren't exactly far off in thinking that the Chargers could pull this one out. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it's just the Chargers being the Chargers at that point. Yeah. Um, I will say that not taking the Giants over the Eagles uh, with you was another big regret that I had because mm -hmm. I knew better. Like, I had a feeling about that game, but I couldn't uh, couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger, so I'm really happy that you did. Mm -hmm. But along those lines, what would be your game of the week? It's obvious there. Uh, for me, they're, uh, the, the Bills uh, beating the Dolphins there on the last game of the regular season yeah, yeah that one had a lot of really big implications for the division mm -hmm. and so the fact that they were able to pull that off was very very good um for mm -hmm. me i think i am gonna say the 49ers and rams yeah because it was two b squads going at it and yeah. honestly the difference maker was jake moody missing the extra point which is rare. He doesn't usually do that. He had a whole streak all year long. And then in crunch time, he missed the extra point. And what do you know? They lost by one. 
So, but also uh, Sam Darnold uh, just trying to make something happen uh, for the 49ers and fumbling it away when he was trying to scramble around. Darnold stepping up, can't take a sack here, he lost the football! That was really heartbreaking and disappointing and um, a little bit infuriating on my part because that was a really decent split game for me. So mm -hmm. I was a little mad about that. But uh, what would be your shock of the week then? Oh, uh, my shock would uh, have to be uh, the Titans there uh, beating the Jags there, uh, costing the Jags a uh, playoff spot there. Yeah. Pretty much uh, wiped out most of their coaching staff as a result of it. Yeah, everybody but Peterson um, mm -hmm. is now gone. I would agree with you on that one. I think, um, in a way, given that it was a divisional game, it makes sense that the Titans would pull some kind of shenanigans. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was surprised with how Jacksonville performed. Because basically, you win, you take the division, and sure. you couldn't get it done. And that yeah. loss is what catapulted the Steelers to go in and the Bills to automatically go in as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. it was um, definitely a hard loss. Uh, for me, I think what I will do is take the Patriots completely letting Bill down in his final game as a Patriot. True. Um, they lost 17-3 to to the Jets. Um, yeah, bear in mind there, that game was a snow game there. Still, that's kind of my problem. In a snow game, typically you would have a good run game, mm -hmm. and you have Ezekiel Elliott and Stevenson back behind him, so I, I don't understand how you were only able to put up three. Yeah. Um, and it was really disappointing, given that it was, like we talked about, his last game yeah. of the, um, the Patriot era for him. Mm -hmm. Which, if you guys missed it, I do have a coaching carousel video up on the channel that I uploaded on Thursday. So if you guys want to go check out that, uh, Steve and I were joined by John, and we discussed mm -hmm. some of the, uh, the happenings of the day on Black Monday and our yeah. predictions for it. Turns out some of our predictions were absolutely horrid because we yeah. didn't think Mike Vrabel was going anywhere. He gets fired. Yeah. We thought Pete Carroll was safe. He gets let go. So... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we we kind of beefed it in a lot of things, yeah. but I think we had yeah. some some fun and some good predictions. Yeah, yeah. and uh, on top of that, there, if you count, count college, there, uh, the biggest shock was, of course, uh, Nick Saban uh, retiring there. Yeah, honestly, I was really surprised, but I will say, John Harbaugh or not John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh got the last laugh there. Because he was the final game. He was the one who retired Nick Saban. So mm -hmm. he can always put the feather in his cap for that. That was absolutely amazing. Also, big congrats to uh, the Wolverines for winning the Natty. Please stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go yeah. anywhere, please. Um, other than that, the other surprise that I had was the Bucks only winning by nine. Mm -hmm. um, I found that to be kind of disappointing all things yeah. considered, but I guess maybe when you're facing a team like Carolina, you can kind of chill a little bit. True. Um, I you have don't a, have to show up. Uh, one more, uh, I have one more shocker there to sure. talk about there. Go ahead. The end of the Fal Falcon-Saints game there. Yeah. Everybody thought the Saints were going in vic victory mode, victory formation there, and they, they suddenly scored a touchdown, which prompted the uh, Falcons coach to, to approach uh, – Saints coach t asking him what the bleep was that finish there. Right. Now that was not uh, Dennis Allen's call from a, what we know. Um, mm -hmm. I understand from a player perspective why you would do it. Um, I can understand. I personally, I like it because I'm not really a big fan of victory formation anyway, um, especially when it's in like the first half and you just want to get to the halftime rather than trying to put some points on the board. And for me, the game's not over until you have triple zeros. Yeah. But at the same time, I can understand people saying it was a little bit disrespectful mm -hmm. because victory formation is a mutual agreement that the game is done. Like, we, mm -hmm. we mutually agree, you won, congratulations, let's just get out of here, mm -hmm. go lick our wounds... And, and call this a wrap. And so to kind of pile on the score because you can 
I can understand being disrespectful, but I can also understand the uh, the fighting mentality. So yeah, I don't know. The next season, there there could be uh, revenge on the mind for the Falcons there. Well, maybe, but it's going to be a completely different coach. So I don't know if like the the ill will will carry over. Mm -hmm. um, we still don't know exactly who's going to be the coach down there, and considering how our coding carousel video went, I don't really want to guess because <laughs> I'm gonna be wrong yeah um, I have an idea but I don't want to put that out there um, yeah. for fear of being wrong mm -hmm. on it so okay. we will just um, shove the regular season in the back of our mind and move on forward okay. to the wild card round true sure. we have games all weekend and on Monday we have two on Saturday three on Sunday and then our Monday night games so if you are ready. Ready to go. All right. First things first, we have the Texans hosting a playoff game in the coach's first year and CJ Stroud's first year. And mm -hmm. they will be bringing in the Browns, the team that they traded, you know who, no, set, no means no, yeah. away to. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. Honestly, one, one little thing I do want to say before we do our predictions is um, this entire wild card is nothing but storylines. Yeah. So the the script writers, the universe, however you want to put it, yeah. really did a bang up job on yeah. at least half of these games. There's sure. a story behind everything, and so it, it's really really crazy and a great time to be alive. True. Sure. Yeah, and obviously uh, the first game there is a rematch from uh, Christmas Eve there when the, the Browns uh, demolished the Texans there. But bear in mind there, the Texans didn't have uh, C.J. Stroud that game because he was in the concussion protocol there. Right, I'm pretty sure that was uh, Flacco and Keenum. Yeah. Well, actually, it wasn't really them destroying them. They only won 36 to 22 back in week 16. Mm -hmm. So even without Stroud, the Texans put up a bit of a fight and True. showed how good that defense can be. True. Yeah. But uh, many are many are thinking there that uh, maybe uh, Flacco could uh, be way better quarterback for the Browns than uh, you know who was uh, all season long. Oh, 100%. Um, he's always been the better quarterback. Um, and, you know, honestly, it's kind of embarrassing when you have played four quarterbacks all year long and 38-year-old Flacco comes off of his couch late in the season and he's the best QB that you've had your entire organization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it, it's kind of crazy. Um, you spent all this money on um, no means no. And mm -hmm. right. you could have easily just had Flacco for a fraction of the cost and probably had a better record. Exactly. But uh, I'm expecting uh, another great game like they, like they did there uh, during the season there. I'm mm -hmm. going to predict the Browns to go on the road and uh, beat the Texans there. So, so sorry to uh, fans of uh, C.J. Stroud there. Yeah, I uh, I think what's going to be happening here is it's going to be a battle of the defenses. And I give that edge to Cleveland. And I give... Well, right, exactly. And I give the um, experience edge to Joe Flacco. Yeah. And the coaching experience as well. But I will say that I would not be at all surprised if Houston can pull off some kind of shenanigan here and uh, get a little bit of revenge from Week 16. They've already played them. They've already scouted it. They know what to expect, and they're gritty. You, you know how I love my grit. They're a yeah. very gritty, culture-driven team, and I think that they could be a sleeper team in the playoffs. But I am in agreement with you, and I'm taking Cleveland just because they seem to have the advantage. Mm -hmm. But I also agree it's going to be an amazing, amazing game. But the game that I'm looking forward to the most is one that I'm really sad that we're not going to be able to actually watch. 
it's <laughs> well at least us americans can't watch it steve here gets it for free because he is a boss we have the chiefs <laughs> hosting the dolphins their rematch from the germany game earlier on in the year that the chiefs ended up winning difference being is in kansas city this time and it is going to be frigid one of if not the coldest games on record in the NFL history, so it's about to get exciting. Exactly, there. So, sadly, there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you people in the states uh, can't get the game there unless uh, you subscribe to the Peacock streaming service. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I know exactly what the NFL is doing, and I don't like it. Like they're trying to get a feel for. An all streaming exclusive kind of thing True. and it's going to alienate a lot of consumers i think so True. if you got a buddy who is going to be able to stream the game uh to you with you or something like that then that's great yeah. um i know that i have a group of guys who uh, do that um every now and then i'll kind of pop in or at least check on my my notifications to see how the games are going if i can't actually watch with them but yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting. Now, yeah, um, either week that nine. Or, uh, either that or uh, move the Canada there, and we can <laughs> watch it for free. Don't <laughs> tempt me. I have been tempted to blow this popsicle stand a long time ago. Because <laughs> Canada, Canada's where it's going on. You know, they they got they got their stuff together, and uh, yeah. From a TV right. perspective, on top of a bunch of other things. But um, all of that being said, uh, the Chiefs and Dolphins last met in Week 9, as we said, over in Germany, where the Chiefs took it 21-14. to 14. Exactly. I believe that was a split game that you and I had. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, exactly there. But, but I, uh, yeah. yeah. Obviously, uh, with the Dolphins there, they've been struggling ever since they lost to the Ravens there, and then... Then they lost that big game to uh, the Bills last week there for the division there. Yeah, they uh, they have a hard time winning in December, historically speaking. Um, they've always like had, had this issue. like In December, they tend to crash and fall apart. Um, I believe there was an injury to Tyreek Hill that didn't go well late mm -hmm. in the season, so that definitely hurt them as well. Right. And then losing Bradley Chubb on defense, that's not going to be easy uh, nope. to combat. However, they are facing a Kansas City team who is kind of in shambles offensively, in my opinion. True. Uh, their defense is carrying yeah. this team 100% because Patrick Mahomes can only do so much uh, by himself. And to me, the Chiefs kind of prove that they don't really care about records and production and um, achievements because... They rested Travis Kelsey the entire game when he was only 16 yards away from getting a thousand yards receiving. And that is such a travesty that I, I can't even fathom doing that. Like, he was so close to getting a thousand yards receiving again. And they just didn't care about that. So. But for me, the, this is a no brainer there. Miami can't play, play in freezing cold temperatures there, and that's the biggest advantage for uh, can't, can't say Chiefs there, and they're, they're my pick to uh, win at home over the Dolphins. I'll agree with you on uh, taking the Chiefs for sure at home. I think the weather is going to play a hu huge, huge role in it. Mm -hmm. My only devil's advocate to that is that typically when you have a really cold game, mm -hmm. you pound the rock, right? Yeah you have a really good ground game and i think that the dolphins have a better running back duo yeah. than the chiefs have a run game of and so that would be my only concern coming into this game is that i think a chan's probably going to have himself a game unless he's hurt and if he's hurt then um Mo i was gonna say mozart but that's not his name but it's, it's 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 something like Mozart. <laughs> I don't really know exactly how to pronounce it, but anyway, I think their their two back set should have a bit of a field day. 
So I'm really hoping that Kansas City's defense can be what steps up, make some plays, get some turnovers. Maybe they can score defensively, and that'll take a little bit of pressure off of Mahomes because you know that he's going to try to do everything on his own because they can't have any receivers to actually catch. Yeah. So it, it's going to be interesting, but I'm looking forward to that game because I love like brutally cold winter football. It's really fun to watch. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Alright, well, speaking of barely cold, we are now going to Buffalo. I don't know what their weather forecast is going to be like, but it's Buffalo, yeah. so hard telling. And they will be hosting the surprising Steelers in the wild card, yeah. with Mason yeah. Rudolph as their QB. Finally. Uh, I mean, yeah, and, but the big thing for the Steelers there, they're they're not going to be able to have uh, T.J. Watts who are play, play on defense there. Yeah, unfortunately, his season did end last week with a knee injury. Um, I believe it was an MCL yeah. in that game with Baltimore on Saturday, which yeah. the Steelers did come back to actually win that one after the loss of Watt, so mm -hmm. not bad. Mm-hmm. But I do think that's definitely going to affect them in this game. Because if you don't have TJ Watt up front to get pressure on Josh Allen, yeah, I just don't know how you can manage to win this one. True. This is a no-brainer there. Uh, the Bills are too powerful at home there. They have the Mafia there. And uh, obviously the weather's, uh, weather's going to be bad there. Uh, who knows? It might might, might uh, have another snowstorm in Buffalo there. Hopefully, they don't have to measure it in feet this time. <laughs> I exactly. remember last year; it was horrible. It was absolutely a disaster of a storm. So, hopefully, mm -hmm. it won't be that bad. But I am in agreement with you, and I'm taking Buffalo at home. Yeah. Mostly what because is? of the loss of T.J. Watt, because I think that like it, it could be a surprisingly close game if it wasn't for that. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh being out of Pennsylvania, they're used to the snow as well, so it's not like they'd be coming into unknown elements, but not having that powerhouse on defense is really going to hurt. Okay. All right, so next up in our storyline of the season, we have the Packers visiting former coach Mike McCarthy and the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys. They have to go through Jerry World. Do you think exactly. they can be the first team this year to beat Dallas at home? Ooh, tough call there, because uh, obviously uh, Cowboys are way too powerful there coming down the stretch there with uh, huge wins there. Uh, other than that, that, that loss to, close loss to Miami there. Right, but that was on the road, and they also got embarrassed by Buffalo on the road. They've lost mm -hmm. a few decent games on the road. They lost to Arizona on the road. Yeah. So, honestly, I think the fact that they're at home is really, really saving them. Um, unsurprisingly, yeah. winning their division, hosting a playoff game at home, yeah. it, it's really going to help Dallas going forward. So, yeah. it's uh, definitely unsurprising that uh, it ended up being this way. Unfortunately, uh, Jordan Love is gonna gonna be in a tough situation there this week. There. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This, this team is way way too powerful powerful to face there, and uh, they are. In my opinion, the uh, Cowboys uh, are going to romp romp it at home against the Packers there. I 100% agree. My biggest takeaway from this game, or at least like the, the biggest thing that I'm the most curious on, isn't the way that how Jordan Love is going to handle it. I don't know what the refs are going to do in this game because you have both of their favorites going off. Yeah. You you have the Packers, who is one of their golden childs, and Dallas at home, which we know as a proven fact is one of their golden childs. So, which way do you think the zebras are going to lead? Yeah, that, that's a hard call there. It really is. I personally think that they're going to lean towards Dallas. 
because yeah. Dallas is the more um, secured team right now. I think that Green Bay is young, and they're up and coming, and they're apt to make mistakes, and I think that's going to cost them um, big in this game. But I will say, for both of you teams, just watch for hands to the face. Careful there, uh, call the right, right man for a two-point conversion there. <laughs> yeah, or just, you know, don't do any trick plays because you don't want to confuse the referees. They have a hard enough time understanding what they're supposed to do. So the less confusion you can give them, the better. Just do a straight-up offense, no trickery, no deceit. Make sure everybody knows what everybody's doing, and everything will be fine. There you go. But, now we have the game that I'm the most nervous about. Okay. Matthew Stafford and the LA Rams. Coming back to Detroit for the first time that Detroit is hosting a playoff game and his return. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be loud. Sure. I, I remember I uh, talked to you uh, Sunday night after the games were over there. You did. I was asking you if uh, you were conflicted about this game here. I'm, I'm not. I'm 100% not conflicted. I think um, it, Stafford will have his time in the Ring of Honor after he retires. Mm -hmm. But right now Detroit is looking at him as the enemy because he is. True. And Good. so... Like, yes, I still like the guy for everything that he did for the city. But right now, you're on the other side of the battlefield, and Detroit has to go at him as such. And not only that, but none of the players have any connection to Stafford. They weren't here when he was, so... True, yeah. There's uh, not going to be any kind of, like, happy family you. reunion, you know? Yeah. Question for you is, uh, when he steps on the field, on uh, Ford Field on Sunday night there, uh, Will he get a standing ovation, or will he get booed, or uh, indifferent? Personally, I would play it as indifferent, but there's going to be a handful of morons who will boo him, because that's just what they do. They uh, they bleed blue hardcore. Uh, now that Detroit is winning, they bleed blue. Let me, let me clarify. When Detroit was not winning, they were asking to have the team sold, and they were wearing bags on their head, and tape over players' names because they were disgusted or whatever. Now that they're doing okay. well, all of a sudden they have pride in the one pride. So they will okay. try to play that up um, for the sake of being involved. But yeah. I, I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't boo him. I think that he deserves mm -hmm. more respect than that as a player. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not like he was a rival coming in. It's not Aaron Rodgers that we would, you know, boo out of the city, right? So he he deserves respect. Um, I think they should just go at it as a game. Just play okay. play it as a game like you would anyone else. Now, it's not only about Stafford. It's about Jared Goff facing his, his former team as well. And with the way yeah. that he was disrespected by the Rams organization, I would think that he would have more to prove than Stafford does, because Stafford and the Lions ended amicably. There wasn't any ill will. Um, mm -hmm. It was a mutual decision. They asked him where he wanted to go, and they sent him there. Jared Goff, on the other hand, wasn't asked at all. And he was placed right. in a situation he wasn't used to, didn't know anybody, and the way that he's been able to adapt to the city and the culture and really put the team on his back has been nothing short of amazing, and he deserves all the respect and credit possible. And gotcha. I think this is going to be a really good game, just purely on stats. True. But for me, uh, the playoffs always have that one huge shocker, shocker there, a shocker upset there. To me, this is the game I, I'm going to predict will be the shocker Shocker of, of the playoffs there. I'm going to take the Rams on the road to beat the Lions. Wow. Okay. I knew that some people were. And I was afraid of that. Um, because honestly, I was very tempted to. 
because I do have a feeling that um, based on how the script has gone <laughs> for the entire season, I, I do think that Detroit is being set up to fail. I do think that um, the league will not let Detroit in. Um, they had no choice but to let them into the playoffs because they they won. Like you can't deny the results. But I had a very bad feeling coming into this game that it, it's just poetic that Matt Stafford would be the one to kick Detroit out. Mm-hmm. That being said, I'm going to believe. I'm going to choose to believe, even though that's never served me well before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm going with Detroit at home. I'm I'm thinking that it's going to be a raucous place. I think that it's going to be loud enough that it's going to disorient Stafford. And I think that hopefully okay. they can do enough to shut down the offense. Now, defense is where I'm concerned. They've been very wishy-washy, and so then again, so is the Rams. Like, the Rams almost got beat by the Giants, so it, it could be either way for me. So we have our first split of the postseason, because I am being a homer to a fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going down with the pride if I go down at all. Okay. So we shall see how it goes. But yep, so you're taking Stafford and I am saying in golf we trust. Okay. Now it is time for Monday night of the wild card round where we have the Eagles a little bit banged up, a little bit of a yeah. broken wing. Mm-hmm. Flying on down to Tampa to take on the dumpster fire division winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, uh, obviously uh, the Eagles' uh, defense sucks there. <laughs> that is the most bluntly we could possibly put it, but yes, it is yeah. bad. They are uh, injury-riddled yeah. and stupid because they decided to go ahead and put Matt Patricia in charge of things. And yeah. ever since he's been put in charge, they have not done well. Nope. Contain your shock, please. Yeah. Who didn't see this coming? Yeah. I mean, it's Matt yeah. Patricia. Exactly. He couldn't win with that defense if they were fully healthy. I truly don't think so. I think that no. Matt Patricia is so bad when it comes to a football IQ. Exactly. That it doesn't matter how many stars he has. I don't think he can put together a cohesive defense, a good defensive scheme. I I think that he would have been just like the refs, and he would have gotten True. bamboozled yeah. by the most basic of trick plays. He's, just, he's not good. He might be brilliant and a rocket scientist with two degrees from MIT, but his football IQ is in the toilet. Yeah, exactly. So all no. of that being said... <laughs> And obviously, with the Bucks, they're uh, they surprise a lot of people by winning their division. There, I figured the the Saints would uh, end up winning it there, but yeah, honestly, yeah, I I I think that the Saints should have won that division. Mm-hmm. I think that they had a few games that they let get away from them, exactly. and um, their field goal misses, like John was talking about in our um, coaching carousel video. The special teams letting New Orleans down, honestly, I think that is what cost them the division. Because if they would have had one more game in their win column, we would be having a completely different discussion right now. Exactly. So, you know, it's really kind of disappointing. Um, But that being said, congratulations to the Bucks. You did win it again. Um, One way or another, somehow you made it happen. And I think a lot of that credit can go to Baker Mayfield. Exactly. There. I do have to give him credit for that. He is yeah. very, he very around, decent. Yeah, he turned around the franchise there, the po- post-Brady era. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, they needed somebody, and they needed somebody with an attitude who wasn't afraid to fill in big shoes. 
Exactly. You know, when when Brady left, there's a huge gap to fill. And you needed somebody who wasn't afraid of the challenge. And Baker Mayfield is that kind of guy. So, kudos to Baker. Yeah. You deserve deserve, deserve our congratulations for that. Yes, I will agree with that. Yeah. But for me there, this one, I'm going to go with my special lean here with this uh, three-pointer last one. And I'm going to take the Bucks at home to beat the Eagles there and send Matt Patricia on, on the unemployment line. Lord knows, I hope so. If Philadelphia is dumb enough to keep him for an entire season just to see what he can do, mm-hmm. then they are dumber than I thought they were. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm actually in agreement with you. I agonized over this game mm-hmm. for a while. This was the last one that I pinned down because I don't truly believe in Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um mostly because of where they came from in, in their division. Mm-hmm. I would have had the same debate if New Orleans would have won it. Or if Atlanta would have held on and won it. Like I, I would have been having the exact same struggle. But I think for me it all comes down to the fact that the Eagles won Matt Patricia, so mm-hmm. spite all the way. And two, they're very injured right now on the defensive side of the ball. And offensively, you don't really know how Hurt's finger's doing, how A.J. Brown's knee is doing. Exactly. So they're going to have to rely heavily on the run game. And I don't think that that alone will be enough to win in Florida. So I'm in agreement. And I was, I don't know. This was one of those games that was just like, I can see it going either way. But in the end, I decided the spite is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there we there we go. Um, yeah. And like you said, there uh, we'll get the uh, Dino pick there later on. There exactly. Yeah, I will be um, plopping Dino's pick for the Eagles and Bucks game up right about now. All right, he's kind of sleepy, so I don't know if this is gonna go well, but. Eagles and Bucks, first round of the wild card. You you just you just don't want anything, do you? Okay, he kept that one. So I guess he's taking Bucks because he actually kept it. I don't know, you're very finicky today, and I don't know what your problem is, but okay. All right, so thank you, buddy. I am just as surprised as everybody else by that pick. I can't believe you've done this. Yeah. All right, so now we move on forth to our friends' picks of the wild card round. Here we go. All right, so first up we have Troll. Who went with the Texans? Knock knock. Mm-hmm. He took the Chiefs. Who's there? Yeah, the Bills. Interrupting Sloth. So then he took the Cowboys. Interrupting mm-hmm. Sloth. Who? There you go. Went with the Lions. And then he took the Eagles. Sloth. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I I get the joke. I like that joke a lot. Also, I know I typoed interrupting sloth, but everybody knows I'm not a great typist, okay? It's fine. Everyone. It gives my series character, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so next up, we have uh, the first of three pages for Papa Agron's picks. We have the Browns over the Texans. The Texans are an incredibly talented team, and while these two teams have played each other earlier in the season, Stroud didn't play that game. The Texans are quite noticeably a lot better when Stroud is on the field. That being said, I think the Browns' defense is just that good that it will hold back the Texans. Couple that with how Flacco has been playing like he was when he took the Ravens to the Super Bowl, and I think the Browns take it by a hair. Mm -hmm. Then he has the Chiefs over the Dolphins. 
I know there's a big story about Tyreek coming back to play in Arrowhead, but while he's having an amazing season, the Dolphins team as a whole is rattled with injuries. Whether that's the reason for the lackluster play the Dolphins have been experiencing as of late or not, it's not a good sign. The Chiefs' defense has been surprisingly more the more notable part of their game over their offense. And while the Chiefs' offense has not been playing well, Pacheco is going to run wild over that Dolphins' front line. Then we have the Bills over the Steelers. Mike Tomlin has done it again. A team that looked like it was going nowhere, he somehow managed to drag them to a winning record and a playoff spot. With Mason Rudolph, no less. Sadly, their star defensive player with Watt is out. That is definitely going to create a lot of problems with the rushing the quarterback, and Josh Allen is the guy to take advantage of it. This might very well be the classic round one playoff blowout game. Mm -hmm. well, then, done. yep, yep, exactly. Then, naturally, he has the Cowboys over the Packers. Packers have a history with beating the Cowboys in the playoffs. This Packers team is probably the youngest team overall in the NFL this year, but they have a lot of talent. Jordan Love has been straight crushing it as of late. He has the second most touchdowns only behind Dak Prescott. But speaking of Prescott, the Cowboys are not one to be short of talent. They are undefeated at home this season and have a lot more experience than the current Packers team. While Aaron Jones could potentially have a field day, I don't think it's going to be enough to hold the Cowboys back. Then he has the Rams over the Lions. Sorry, Joy. A game that if at the beginning of the season you told me was going to happen, I'd have called you a liar. The NFL scriptwriters are working some magic here. This game is going to be straight back and forth seeing who can score more. St. Brown, Montgomery, and hopefully Laporta against Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua, and Cooper Cup. Whatever the over-under is, you take the over. Be that as it may, I think the Rams are going to have an easier time with Stafford picking apart that Lions secondary. I, for one, would love to see Brian Branch or Kirby Joseph pick off Stafford to get the win. I'm just saying. I think that would be magical. Alright, and then finally we have the Eagles over the Bucks. Both teams limped into the playoffs in one way or another. The Eagles lost five of their last six games. The Bucks had a hard time beating the Panthers to scrape by. Both teams are definitely not showing their best, or they are and they're just that bad. However, playing in January isn't that foreign of a territory the past few years for either team, especially the Eagles, having gone to the Super Bowl last year. Both teams have had a week to figure out what they're supposed to be doing, now it's just time to execute. While the Eagles losing would be a joyous occasion, I think they're going to be the team that steps up and dismantles the Bucks. Okay. All right. And now, speaking okay. of the Bucks, we have SDS. Who took the Browns, saying Stroud's Rookie of the Year, but still an Ohio State QB. Prepare for your Sam Bradford arc. Mm -hmm. He took the Dolphins, saying Tyreek Hill Revenge Game, take two. He went with the Bills, saying Steelers BS ends here. He went with the Packers, over the Cowboys. Green Bay, being the Cowboys' bane in the playoffs, is just another trend that will continue with them. He went with the Lions, saying that everybody channel as much anti-ref energy as possible for them throughout the playoffs. And then he took the Bucks, saying that we should patent the name Fraud Busters. Seriously though, Eagles have looked awful, and I think our defense carries us again. Thank you, Antoine Winfield Jr. Please stay. And moving on, we now have John, who took the Browns, saying great game incoming. And then you took the Chiefs, saying how dare you lock my hottie under a paywall. I deserve a refresh of those pictures. It's going to be cold, nine degrees and windy, so you know what that means. <laughs> and then he took the bills. Honestly, this will be closer than it should with the weather like it will be. Mm -hmm. 
He took the Cowboys, saying this offense is bussin'. He took the Lions, saying I'ma play this risky. Wow. I almost went the joy route of believe by not believing, because the Lions have minimal playoff experience, and unfortunately McVay is quite good in postseason play. Mm -hmm. And then he took the uh, the Bucks, saying Hurts and Brown got injured last week, and you have Matt Patricia at the helm. Yeah, you're done. This is more of an Eagles loss than a Bucks win. Yeah. That is a really good way to put it. I think if if the Bucks do win, it's more that the Eagles are horrible. Exactly. And then they can just go get stomped by San Francisco next week. So, it's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then finally, we have Buff. Uh -oh. Who also took the Browns, uh, just saying boo. Long line of boo. Mm -hmm. I, I love how he's stuck with that all season. That has been... Yeah my favorite thing <laughs> and then he took the dolphins saying that it would be funny he went with the bills this would be the annual first round blowout he went with the packers just saying gross he went with the lions saying to be honest stafford getting this win would be funny though and then he went with the eagles saying they may have had a rough last six ish weeks but let's be honest, the Bucks are the real frauds in the NFL. And there we go. So, all of those picks are in. Our picks are in. Dino's picks are in. The official yeah. kickoff of the NFL postseason begins. Yeah, let the insanity begin. Honestly, I... I'm so nervous for a lot of these games. I really think that most of them could go either way. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had multiple Steve specials. Yep. <laughs> yep, it's going to be really, really fun. So, anything you want to end this off with before we get on out of here? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, best of luck to all teams in the playoffs there. Even the, even the, to all the Ravens and Niners fans who were on the bye from first round. Yep, I'm curious, like, what their stake in this is. Like, would you have a preference on who you would want to face, or do you just want the smoke? Yeah. I think That's if you're... Thing. Yeah, I think if you're the Ravens, you do not want to face a division rival. So you're rooting Bills, and you're rooting Texans. So, let us know what you guys think down in the comments below, as usual. Obviously, you hit the like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for all future videos on here. Yep, exactly. And if you have not, again, be sure to go check out the Coaching Carousel video. I had a lot of fun doing it. I um, was a little extra savage towards a certain Mr. Rogers during that, and I am not sorry. In the least, he deserves... Every bit of my savagery. Exactly. So honestly, look forward to next year when he plays every single week and I get to treat him like I did the Bears. Exactly. That is going to be fun. So if you guys want to follow up with that, be sure to subscribe, like you said, and check out um, the entire NFL predictions versus going forward. It's going to be a fun ride. Mm -hmm. So we will catch you guys next week for the divisional rounds. Best of luck to you and your picks, and we will catch you guys very, very soon.